How long should it take for a newer voiceover talent to record a voiceover audition? That is the topic of discussion on this morning's live stream. I'm Bill DeWeese, and welcome. How are you doing? Welcome to the Morning Huddle. Good to have you guys here this morning. We get together every weekday morning at about 8.15 Eastern Time to talk voiceover strategy, tips, tricks, things to help you do one thing, make money or make more money in voiceover. That's the purpose of my training. That's the purpose of these 1,000 plus videos that I put on this channel, which are all free to use, please. I mean, it's a library, an encyclopedia of information. And for those of you who are ready for the deeper dive into serious voiceover training, who really want to make this into a career, I've got the voiceover blueprint with a link below in the description. Check it out. And by the way, hey, before we get into our topic today, take a second to uh, introduce yourself. Let me know who you are in the uh, in the live chat. And let me know where you're watching or listening from this morning. I would appreciate it. So a question that comes up often or not, sometimes it's not even a question in my, in the voiceover blueprint, you know, we do a live, there's like a live coaching session pretty much every weekday, sometimes occasionally even more than one a day. And, um, and oftentimes during a and a portion of the program or the, or the training session, uh, somebody will make reference to the hours that they spent on an audition. You know, they spend an hour or a couple of hours and here I'm saying, Hey, you need to do 10 audiobook auditions a day, if, you know, if, to get started. And they're saying, gosh, you know, it's taking me an hour to do one. How in the world can I do 10? Well, obviously you can't spend 10 hours a day recording auditions, nor should you. That's why I thought this important or this topic was important. So when you're first getting started, there is a learning curve, no doubt. It doesn't matter whether you're using Adobe Audition or whether you're using Audacity or GarageBand or Logic Pro or Pro Tools and, or whatever, whatever you're using. There's, if you haven't used these programs before, there's a learning curve involved. And sure, it's going to take a while. And no, you're not going to be able to record 10 auditions a day right out of the gate if you don't have experience. So you have to be, you have to be kind and allow your, to yourself, that is, and allow yourself um, the time to, to, to learn the platform and how to edit and how to record and all of that, which by the way, you know, takes a few weeks to get to a place where you get fairly comfortable with it and don't get into editing overkill. And that's, that's a topic for another day. Those of you who are spending an hour editing something, we need to have a discussion. You need to be my voiceover blueprint. That's what you need. But anyhow, I digress. Spending too much time recording auditions. Here's the, here's the thing. You don't want to sacrifice quality for quantity, but at the same time, you're building a business. So you need to learn, you've got to learn that balance to where you're being good, but efficient. Now, again, with time and as you begin to build your skills and you become more fluent in the work that you're doing, that's, that's immediately, go, immediately going to cut down time. But I'm finding that many people, especially who are new, are just, they're, they're, taking and retaking and doing another take and re-recording and re-recording because in their mind, they're not, they just can't get it right. They're not hearing it the way they, they want to hear it. And I just want to say, just take a deep breath and stop for a second. Just stop. I understand there's, there's this felt need of most of us to present perfection. Well, number one, perfection doesn't exist. So you got to let go of that whole concept, but obviously you want to be as competitive or, or as good as you can. But what I want to tell you from my experience, now remember, I say this pretty much every morning and it's true, I've recorded over 10,000 paid projects. I've done more auditions than, I mean, it'd be like counting the grains of sand on a beach. Well, maybe not quite that much, but you get the idea. It's a lot more than I could possibly ever even calculate. And I will tell you this, there comes a point and it comes fairly quickly, a point of diminishing returns when it comes to number of takes. And what I'm hearing newer talent tell me is they'll do eight, nine, 10, a dozen, 20 takes trying to get it just right. Here's the thing. After three, four, maybe five takes, it ain't getting better. It's getting worse. You know why? Because you've moved from feeling to thinking. And once it moves here, you're dead. The game is over you've lost already. And all that time spent, you are wasting. 
I want you to keep that in mind. Let's talk about why. Remember the conversation I had yesterday about the top-down performance model that most people have it completely backwards. They start with the particulars and they're, you know, they're, they're thinking about, and it's the focus when you're thinking about particulars, you know, you're, you're li- listening or looking at references of who you should sound like and watching a bunch of YouTube videos as references. And you're looking at 25 adjectives or, that describe how, you know, the client wants it to sound. Once you get into that mode and once you begin to obsess on that, now I'm not saying you don't need to look at it or understand it. Yes, you need to understand context. It gives you an idea. But once you begin to obsess on that, everything has moved. You've moved into analytical mode and you can't win being analytical in voiceover. The thing that I like to, to compare it to, and if you don't play golf, forgive me, but I think you'll still get the analogy. In golf, if you watch anybody play golf, you'll note I mean, from amateur to professional, usually take a few, two or three practice swings before they play, or before they play a shot, I should say, on each shot. Why is that? Are they, you know, are they trying to, uh, to learn their golf swing at that point? No. What they're doing, they're trying to get the feel of the club. They want to know what it feels like, what, what that club, when it, and they'll swing it usually until, until it feels right, until it feels comfortable. And then they know, okay, this is the way I want it to feel. Voiceover is very much the same way on auditions. You need to, you may, you know, you do it once, twice, maybe three times to get a feel. Because again, we're thinking big picture. We're not focused on, we're not dissecting every single nuance of what's going to happen, where you're going to pause. And if you get context right and feeling right, all of that stuff comes naturally. And plus it's, it's only about five to 10% of importance. Anyhow, 90 to 95% of the importance is what you feel when you read, because that's what the listener then feels which is what allows them to trust you, which then causes them, it compels them to hire you. So when you are, you know, when you're 10, after 10 or 15 minutes into working on an audition, you're beginning to move out of here, the feeling part of it into the analytical part. And then it becomes about sound. You're trying to, it doesn't sound right to you. So you do it again. It still doesn't sound right. Then you do it again. And then you scrap it on and say, I'm starting from, okay, let's try something completely different. Well, now you are, you are down such a rabbit hole of analytical thinking that it's impossible for you to win that edition at that point. So again, I'm not talking about being sloppy and I'm not talking about sacrificing quality to have for quantity and speed. But what I am saying is that you, the time that you spend needs to be about feeling the script not thinking the script, look at it, get a sense of what it is, understand the context. Yes. But then, and you know, I've, there's plenty, I've, I've talked about this a lot. You can go back and reference previous YouTube videos. Those of you who are my blueprint, we've got extensive training on that, as you well know. Um, then you feel it, feel the swing, couple swings, you feel it and then do it and then send it and forget it. Because after that you're wasting time, you are burning time. And not only are you wasting time, you're making it, you're killing your career because you're so into your head. You're now having self doubts. You're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, it's taken me way too long to do this. I can't do it right. I'm getting worse. I'm not getting better. Well, of course you're getting worse. I'm not better because you read it 25 times. So remember after three, four, maybe five times the most, it's diminishing return. After that, it does not get better. It only gets worse. Now with time and proper training, and input and feedback, sure, your auditions will get better and you'll become more effective in the time that you spend. But I'm just saying, regardless of where you're at with your training, after three, four, five takes, just edit it, send it out, be done with it, move on to the next one. Not to save time. If it took an hour to do it right, then I would say take an hour to do it. But what I'm telling you is after three, four, five takes, it's only getting worse at that point. So give yourself a break. Um, allow yourself to feel the read. Don't don't get past feeling it. Once you get past feeling it, once it becomes analytical, again, it is all over because you're so stuck in your head, you can't get out. That is my tip for you today. That will help you win more auditions. And that may be the, it may, that may seem contrary to what you think you should do. And I understand that because it did to me too, when I first started. But trust me, from a lot of years of experience and in, in recording auditions, getting lots of work and coaching others, take that approach and just see what happens. Post a comment below 
in the in the uh, below the video to let me know how it works for you. All right. With that being said, let's check out and see who's on the live stream this morning. Ty in Warsaw, Indiana. How are you doing this morning, Ty? Hey, Janet in Florida. Denise in Long Island. Patrick in Maryland. Bob, how are you doing in Reedsville, North Carolina? Mark in Albuquerque. Rusty in the UP of Michigan. Jason in Mobile, Alabama. We've got uh, Nathan in Spring Mills, Pennsylvania. Good morning. David, what's up in Louisville? And we've got uh, Ryan from Long Island in the house this morning. Miss Johnny in Houston. Good morning to you, Shannon in Texas. Emmanuel in Atlanta. Julie in Springfield, uh, Springfield, Virginia. Albert, how are you doing? I sat in on Alex's Q&A last night. And uh, Albert is in the voiceover blueprint. So uh, every one of, one of the coach, I said we have coaching sessions like every weekday. Once a week, Alex Deweese, my son, the audio engineer, does a coaching session where he talks audio tech. So for my students who have questions about anything from equipment to editing audio, any of that stuff, that's what, so what, that's what Albert's referring to. So thanks, Albert. Glad you were there and I'm glad you found it helpful. Awesome. Greg in Asheville, North Carolina. Phil in Tokyo or from Tokyo, who's in Arizona, dealing with the heat. When's the next flight out? <laughs> you know, I'll be honest, it's hot. I mean, I think I told you when I was there, it was like 116 degrees and like the kind of stuff that will melt the rubber of the bottom of your shoes to the asphalt or to the sidewalk. But I could acclimate to that much better than I could living in cold weather. My friends, those of you in Canada, honestly, I don't know how you do it. Uh, and I guess, you know, some people, I see my wife, for instance, she, she would thrive there. She'd love snow, ice. I mean, she's like, sign me up for that. So, and you might think, well, how does that work between us? Well, sometimes not very well, to be honest, but we negotiate it. The Midwest is where we, you know, where we make it work here. Uh, let's see, Scott, looking for some sunshine in Dayton, Ohio. Heather, good morning to you in Southern Illinois. Jim in Lincoln, Nebraska. Corey, uh-oh, it's time to ring the bell. Let's see here. Oh, my, um, my monitor just went off. I think I accidentally touched the off button. Okay, here we go. You ready, Corey? He got his first audiobook narration project. Corey, you're the first official, you got the first official bell ringing. My, uh, those of you who haven't followed very long, I promised I would get a bell so that we could ring the bell when somebody gets a new job or gets their first job or does something really cool. And that's what that's about. Corey, way to go. Thank you, Bill, for your training and guidance. Well, hey, my my pleasure, Corey. I'm excited for you. Wade in Philadelphia. How are you doing? Chris in Columbus, Ohio. Emmanuel. Let's see here. I'm struggling with content to, for, to create my first audiobook demo. Use any book, any book you like. Pick books you like and that you want to, the types of books that you want to read. Unlimited Supply. Craig's here to let me know that Wichita is listening. Fantastic. Stephen in Mississippi. Christine, good morning in sunny Chicago land. Stephen Oshkosh, finally a sunny morning. Good deal. Good morning from India. Soon to be in the voiceover blueprint. Love it. All right. Awesome. Denise. Jay says, way to go, Corey. We've got Albert from Lorain, Ohio. Kimberly in Minnesota. Aaron in Boston. Laura, hey there. <laughs> Great picture and sound. Yeah, you know, thank you, Laura. I appreciate that. I I upped my my video game, maybe even the sound game, a little bit yesterday when I um I, I started a while back. I was having prop my video just didn't look as good as it should based on the fact that I was using a 4K camera. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll bypass the intermediary software and just go stream directly into YouTube. And it didn't get any better. And so I bought a new computer. And then, and now I'm using the, the intermediary software again, and it has increased the uh, definition of the picture and the audio. So that's cool. Thank you. I appreciate that, Laura. Dwight, good morning to you in Old Saybrook, Connecticut. Barb in Ann Arbor. Dr. Bob, how are you doing in Clearwater? It is a great voiceover day. Absolutely. I love your attitude. <clears throat> Aaron in Muncie, Indiana. I'm literally doing my first audition today. Did you say first audition? 
Congratulations, Aaron, and good luck. Remember the diminishing returns speech I just gave. Lately, I think my talks have turned from speeches into sermons and a lot, a lot of pulpit slamming here. Uh, <laughs> some things I feel pretty passionate about, I guess. Wally in Annapolis, Maryland. Good morning. Howdy to you, Matt, in Edison, New Jersey. Whoa, picked up his first voiceover gig. Well, you know what that means. All right. Way to go. Love it, Matt. Uh, let's see here. We've got Poland in the house this morning. Awesome. Theo, good morning to Bill and all from the, as the French say, Iron Highway, <laughs> careening towards downtown Chicago. Thank you, Leo. Good morning. Or Theo, I'm sorry. Leo was my father-in-law. Tony, greetings from Ireland. Good afternoon, Bill and all. Hey, Tony, good afternoon to you in Ireland. I'd love to make it out that way. According to Ancestry.com, that's uh, the UK and Ireland. That's where my blood line leads back. So that's the deal there. Sandra in Westerville on that learning curve and making progress. Awesome, Sandra. Um, let's see. Hey, Theo also wanted, uh, waited until you got the bell to mention a recent success. I love this. Upwork just classified me as a top seller. Let's celebrate. Theo is a top seller. This is, I'm sorry, This I may have to replace this bell, but you get the idea. Hey, Theo, that's that's fantastic. Top seller. I love it. That comes with a little bit of time and effort. <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, Denise, good morning. Jason in the Twin Cities, good morning. Uh, let's see here. Neil. From the Chevy Service Center in Cincinnati. Fantastic. Fellow Cincinnatian. Hey, did the Reds win last night? I had to go to bed. Hold on a second. Let's check it out. Let's see. They're playing in San Diego last night, so the game didn't start until 940. And they had run like five games in a row, then they lost one to the A's. And then, for those of you who really want to know... um. Oh, yeah, it was a comeback win last night. Woohoo! Love it. Let's see here. My wife needs to hear this podcast. She has imposter syndrome with an amazing voice, very unique. She has everything she needs to be a great voiceover artist, but the confidence. Boy, I tell you what, that is the plague of everybody in voiceover. Um, lacking the confidence, having imposter syndrome, feeling like they're, you know, that they're, that they're not, they're not that. They're less than. And it's just, it's never true. Uh, Melissa in San Diego. Sorry about your Padres, but good morning. We've got, uh, let's see, Maz Mazatlan. I'm, where is it? Mazatlan, M-A-Z-A-T-L-A-N. I guess I don't know my world geography, but it's good to have you here this morning. <laughs> Ty says, loving the passionate sermons. Chrissy in North Carolina, good morning. Bonjour. Mario in Brazil, good morning. Steve, good morning. Denise, good morning. Dara in Charlotte. <laughs> Somebody said my dog is salivating now. They're like, I want a treat. Pavlov's law is working in full effect here this morning. Hey, guys, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Just remember... You know, it's understandable when you're newer at this, it's going to take a little while to learn. It's going to take a while to, to, to learn to work with your DAW, your recording software. That's to be expected. But when it comes to the reads, just remember, you have to maintain feel. And once you get into analytical mode and it moves up to here, it's pretty much, you pretty much squashed your chances of getting hired. That typically happens after three, four, five reads. So just keep that in mind. You know, once you feel like you're beating a dead horse, move on because it's over at that point. Send out what you've got and move on. All right, guys, have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning.